So uh, the, I, uh, the, the promise for this uh, classroom meeting was to talk about Bayesian networks. That was just a short introduction to, to put it in a broader perspective. So this set of slides, also not too long, is going to be about Bayesian networks and what they are from the mathematical, st statistical uh, point of view. You see how great the idea is uh, after seeing this uh, presentation. In the third presentation, we'll look at uh, some practical things about Bayesian networks like learning and uh, modeling. So the second session, Bayesian networks, I'm going to talk about Bayesian graphical models. To start with, uh, you remember I to talked about the importance of modeling the joint probability distribution, because with the joint distribution, you, we can do a lot of cool things like prediction. The Bayesian model, probabilistic model, essentially encodes the joint probability distribution over its variable. That's it. Very, very uh, brief uh, definition. If you have the joint, you can do anything with it. Here is a very old tool uh, that has probably a few hundred years. Uh, the fathers, the forefathers of uh, probability theory used uh, this tool in, in their work. They didn't uh, draw them in the books because printing presses were not as sophisticated as now, so including a picture was hard. They were just describing this. So if you have two variables, this is the example from the syphilis uh, uh, example from the previous set of slides. You have, you have a disease, then it can be present or absent. In each of these two cases, you have a test that can come out positive or negative. Now, the joint distribution is an assignment of values, of probabilities, to every possible combination of the variables. So these four numbers form the joint probability distribution over the two variables, disease and test. Here's another way of writing them. You see joint, different combinations of the two values. Each variable has two values, a very simple case. The sum of these is one, of course, it's a probability distribution, joint distribution. When you have that uh, representation, you can perform calculations. For example, you can ask, what is the probability of the disease present? Very easy calculation. Just add up those two branches of the tree that are compatible with probability of the, with the uh, event disease is present. And the sum of these two numbers is one. Well, you, you have to divide by the, by the sum of all of them, but it's one. So it's a simple calculation. A harder calculation, what is the probability of uh, the, uh, of the disease present given a positive test result, exactly something that we calculated using <clears throat> Bayes' theorem. The calculation is a little bit more complex. Uh, here we need to remove the branches of the tree that are incompatible with the evidence. The evidence is a positive test result. So the branches that, are, that have negative test result become impossible. The only two branches that are left are these, and the only uh, branch that is compatible with the event disease is present is this one on the top, 0 0.0098. We divide it by the sum of the remaining branches to just normalize it, and we have precisely the posterior calculated with, the, with Bayes' theorem. So as you see, with the joint distribution, representation of the joint distribution, we can do calculation of uh, many things. I'll show you some more things uh, that are cool. What is the problem with this representation? The problem is that as you add variables, you get more and more combinations of values. In fact, it's exponential. Every new variable, in binary case, doubles the number of branches. That's not a joke. If you have 10 variables, then you need uh, 1,024 branches. If you increase that to just 11, one more variable, you have 2,000 of branches. With 20 variables, you have a million of branches. So how can you get a million parameters for a model with 20 variables? There's going to be a lot of expert elicitation of subjective probabilities, or you need a lot of records to learn reliably those uh, parameters, those uh, probabilities. 
brilliant idea, um, which is only 30, 40 years old, um, a statistician, Philip David, and uh, a computer scientist, Judah Pearl, came up with the idea that uh, we could represent explicitly independences in the distrib probability distribution, in the joint distribution. The idea was actually started with uh, Philip David in 1970s. That was his doctoral dissertation, if I remember correctly. He, he developed a formalism um, that would allow him to represent joint distributions um, compactly using independence. Judah Pearl worked it out in 1980s and developed Bayesian networks. He was a, he's a computer scientist, so he made it practical and computational, um, working out using the ideas of uh, Philip David. Of course, he had also seen, some of his contributions were completely new, but um, the foundations were laid by Philip David. Brilliant ideas are obvious once you have them. Of course, it's an obvious idea to use independences. We sometimes say somebody rediscovered the wheel. What we mean by that is he discovered an obvious idea. Somebody, we knew about it already, right? So it's an obvious idea. It is obvious because we have it, we have the wheel. But um, if it's an obvious idea, then why none of the civilizations in the Americas had, had the wheel? Of course, you can say Incas were running uh, on the mountain uh, slopes, hard to, to, get, to get a wheel there. Um, Aztecs, Olmecs, uh, well, they actually had some flat areas, hills and flat areas. But in case of Mayans on Yucatan, uh, this is a pyramid in Chichen Itza, and this is a, an old Mayan road. They had roads even, and they were carrying loads uh, on their backs uh, on these roads. So they didn't have the concept of a wheel. A wheel would be very useful. Brilliant idea. Now, how can you use this idea? If you have a joint distribution of uh, n variables, you can easily write this as a product of conditional distributions. Um, this is also very easy to understand, to prove, by the definition of conditional probability. If we take this on the right-hand side and on the left joint, then we need to divide it by the probability of the condition, which is x2 through x, xn. You multiply both sides by that, and then you have this multiplied by the probability of x2 through xn. You apply the same reasoning for the other thing recursively until you have nothing to condition on. To condition on. So we have a product of conditionals instead of the joint. If you have four variables that are binary, uh, well, actually any, any, uh, any number of states, here's what you can do. And there are many ways of writing this because it all depends on which variables you pick first. Uh, as many ways as there are permutations of n. For four, we have 24 different ways of writing this factorization. No savings yet, nothing gained, but uh, just uh, a factorization. For some factorizations, we can encode explicitly uh, independences. Uh, we can simplify those factorizations by our knowledge of independences. How do we know that things are independent? Well, um, we know it by observation, by experiments, by measurements, or by common sense. For example, um, here is A is independent of C. We know, it has been confirmed also by experiments in psychology, that uh, IQ result, which tells us something about uh, intelligence, is independent of our sex. Women and men are, on the average, equally intelligent. We know it, and it's been tested also. Uh, we know some conditional independences. For example, there is a strong dependence between shoe size and reading ability. The larger your shoe is, the better you can read. But that dependence disappears when you condition on age. So you look at people of different ages. You look at two years old, three years old, five years old, you will notice that when you look at five years old only, uh, then there is no dependence between shoe size and reading ability. 
So that dependence comes because there is a common cause, age. The older you are, the bigger your foot, the, the better you can read. We know about the conditional independence. When we conditional, condition on age, that dependence disappears. So now, given these three independences and a factorization, we can simplify it. Probability of A given C, if we know that A and C are independent, then C tells us nothing about A, we can remove it completely. We can simplify it into probability of A. Let's look at this one. D give, uh, given C, D and A become independent. I'm conditioning here on C already, so A is completely irrelevant when I condition on C. So I can remove A from this factor and get a simpler formula. The same for that one. So the factorization becomes simpler. Now, what are Bayesian networks mathematically? Bayesian networks are a graphical representation of factorizations of joint probability distribution. We do it in such a way that we draw arcs from the conditioning events to the variable before the conditioning bar. So A has three variables condition that is con it's conditioned on, three arcs coming into A. A. C has one arc coming in from D. Please note that there's only one incoming arc into C. And D has no incoming arcs. For every factorization, you will have a different graph, directed graph, directed acyclic graph. The acyclicity comes from the fact that in this factorization, you will never have a situation that you have, let's say, D here, and then you are conditioning on D. Because once you have D here before the conditioning bar, it disappears from the rest. So it's always an acyclic graph. Some factorizations can be simplified. As you remember from the previous slide, I get a simpler factorization. And the graph drawn from this factorization is simpler. Now that has practical implications. First of all, absence of, a, of an arc is a graphical representation of independence, but also uh, it reduces the number of parameters that I need to represent my joint distribution. Bayesian networks, the way I presented them, are equivalent to probability trees. That's just another graphical way of representing joint distributions, but they are much, much more efficient. I told you that with just 20 variables, I would need a million parameters. Here we have 70 variables. This is a practical model, modeling different um, diseases of the liver. Uh, we have quite a number of them. We have uh, nine different variables, and some of them have multiple states even. Uh, so we have nine variables that represent diseases. We have uh, the blue nodes uh, represent risk factors, history data, green nodes, symptoms, and test results. With 70 variables, if you use probability trees, you would need roughly 2 to the power of 70 uh, parameters. If they are all binary, but they are more than binary, so it's even more than, than that. That's 10 to the power of 21. That's a huge number. That many parameters we would need to represent this joint distribution. With Bayesian networks, with this Bayesian network, you just need 2,100 numerical parameters. There are here 123 arcs, but it's more important how many arcs are missing. There are 2,400 arcs missing that uh, could be drawn in a complete graph, but you see they are missing. Every time you see a missing arc, that uh, represents a, uh, an independence. An arc, you saw on the previous slide the mathematical uh, view of uh, Bayesian networks. Here, in a practical model, I can move over to, to the practical view of Bayesian networks. An arc denotes a causal influence. 
absence of an arc means that the variables are not directly causally related. Maybe they are indirectly related, but not directly. So an arc denotes a causal influence. We talk, caus talk causality here because, not because uh, Bayesian networks are always causal, no, but they are able to represent causal influences. So when you build them and you draw the arcs causally, you actually are building correct Bayesian networks representing independences correctly. There is an assumption, an axiom for that. Um, counter examples to that axiom are not very convincing. This is even more impressive. This is a model uh, for diagnosis of uh, diesel locomotives consisting of uh, over 2100 variables. If you wanted to represent the joint probability distribution over these uh, variables, you would need, these are all binary nodes, you would need roughly 2 to the power of 2100, which is 10 to the power of 600. Uh, there are 3600 arcs, uh, it's a spaghetti of connections, but it's more important how many arcs are missing. There are 22, well, 2 million two uh, hundred thousand uh, independences, missing arcs. That's more important. And we can specify this joint distribution with just 12,000 parameters. Still a lot, but uh, uh, the model was constructed semi-automatically from uh, fault trees uh, that, that, are, that were drawn for the diesel locomotives for diagnosticians to use it. Now, uh, to give you an idea of the brilliance of, of this uh, representation of, uh, joint dis of the independences, 10 to the power of 600 is gazillion times more than the number of atoms in the universe. That should be impressive. Right? We can represent practical problems using probability theory, problems that, were, that would be out of the question without the, just this uh, brilliant idea of representing independences. I referred to causality, uh, so let's forget about the mathematics now. I just I presented the mathematics to show you how, um, how good the idea is. You see that we were really uh, threshing around that idea for quite a while. Uh, you'll see further on in these slides that there are relatives of Bayesian networks that we have been using for a while and that you have been using also. Bayesian network, in any case, consists of the structure. The structure represents independences, or the other way around, represents uh, direct causal influences between variables. And then there's also the quantitative part, the numbers. If you remember from the example with the probability tree, there were numbers there uh, representing joint probability distribution. So there are numbers here also. The numbers are marginal probability distributions over nodes that have no predecessors and conditional distributions for the nodes that have predecessors. They really correspond to that factorization that you saw a few slides back. So there are numbers and uh, the fewer arcs you have, the fewer numbers you have in the representation. Each absence means one less dimension in the in the table, so means savings. Inference, um, Bayesian updating, Bayesian inference, application of, of Bayesian, uh, th Bayesian theorem, Bayes theorem. You can answer questions like, what is the probability of an invasive cervical cancer in a female patient with high-grade dysplasia with a history of HPV infection? Um, you can imagine that as observing some variables and then spreading information across the network through a repetitive application of Bayes' theorem. The, f the more sparse the network is, the faster the inference is. I'll show you um, a little bit later inference in the models that you just saw. You can ask uh, the question, what is the probability of an invasive uh, uh, cancer if you, if you vaccinate the, a, a patient? You can, so that's manipulation. In manipulation, we, we set from the outside the, the, the value of this variable, 
Then uh, there is, uh, again, a, a formalism developed by, by people working in this field that uh, tells you you just need to forget about the incoming arcs. The rest should is capable of predicting the effects of your manipulations. And you can also calculate that. The conditional probability in the modified, slightly modified network. Now, uh, I, I, men I mentioned to you that Bayesian networks are not very far from the things that you have been doing in your um, studies uh, so far. Um, there's a whole family of, of models. That is actually very simple. Um, this is a Bayesian networks, network, but um, approximated. We show uh, every, every node is uh, binary. Uh, we just need one parameter per arc. So it's a simplification. You don't need a whole table, just one parameter per arc, one parameter per node, and colors show you the probability, the degree of truth of a proposition. Green, very good, red, very bad, and the colors change. If we have some time, I'll show you that. Here is something quite important to, that, that will help you to, to realize what Bayesian networks are. Bayesian networks are relatives of um, systems, simultaneous uh, equations. Uh, for example, this is a system of 10 uh, equations with 10 unknowns. As you know, um, you could solve that system and uh, have the value of every variable. Um, we have a set of variables of equations that, are, that we can call core equations. They describe the interactions among variables. The other equations are just a setting of exogenous variables. Um, things that come from the outside in this uh, model. And in the uh, uh, 1950s, uh, Herb Simon, I had uh, the honor to work with him, as uh, so I could uh, call him one of my advisors. Um, he proposed a way of draw graphical drawing of uh, the structure captured by the system of equations. Econometricians knew that systems of equations predicted correctly the effects of manipulations, which is, uh, they called it, changes in structure. But they didn't know why. Why is it when you have a system of equations in which each equation is structural, they called it, when every equation is structural, then the system will predict the effects of manipulation. Simon has shown to them that uh, you could give the structure of, of your system as as he derived it, proposing an algorithm for causal ordering, uh, he, this structure can be given a causal interpretation. And then if you have a causal model, you can easily make predictions about the, the effects of manipulation. Here is uh, an example of, of uh, prediction uh, of the effects of manipulation. This system describes uh, a university, money flow in a university. So uh, student-teacher ratios, you see number of students divided by the number of faculty. Faculty salary is the tuition payment times the number of students plus other income, which are endowments and grants. And you divided it by the number of faculty. Of course, there's overhead uh, utilities plus paying the administrative staff. So now uh, manipulation will be setting the student-teacher ratio to 10. And by the way, I showed it uh, in the previous slide, of course, you can see that, uh, uh, that every equation corresponds to a node plus its parents, a family, we call it. So number of students, number of faculty and student-teacher ratio, the three are involved in an equation, and that results in something that we call in the Bayesian network world, a family, a child and its parents. Um, so now, when we introduce that equation, we need to kick out one of the 11 equations now, otherwise the system is over-constrained. Let's say we decide that this will uh, be at the cost of the number of faculty. There, there are actually rules for knowing which variables, we, sorry, which equations you can, you can uh, throw out. If you do that and apply the procedure of causal ordering, please note that some of the arcs are, are changing. Still, each equation describes a family. So we have the family, number of faculty, student-teacher ratio, number of students. 
It's just that different variables are going to be a child and different are going to be parents. Sometimes causation is reversible, like in this economic system. So please note that the new, um, new graph looks different. It has even three layers, not two layers. Right? Another way of thinking about this is the, the order of solution. The graph shows you the order in which you should solve the, the, the system. But we can view it also as the order in which values or variables propagate through the, through the system. In any case, systems of equations and Bayesian networks are really members of the same family. It's a broader family of uh, directed graphs. In fact, I bet all of you have worked with Excel. If you look at Excel and you see that uh, some, some uh, cells are feeded, feeding other cells, then you could also draw a graph. These two cells are feeding this cell, you could draw a graph. A graph like this is actually a relative of Bayesian networks too, because it's a relative of systems of equations. Of course, that's an impractical interface, a spreadsheet, you don't see the structure normally. So there are actually there's software that does a model, graphical modeling of this kind of models. There's a generic name, visual spreadsheets, some people call that. My favorite is Analytica. If you want to do uh, serious modeling uh, that uh, is similar to what you do in spreadsheets, um, but also goes a big step towards uh, Bayesian networks and uh, influence diagrams, they try Analytica. Very, very uh, good program. Developed, by the way, by, by my advisor, uh, Max Hennion. So I'm proud of him <laughs> to develop such a great uh, system that has inspired many other uh, programs, like uh, Genie, the one that I'm going to present you to you today. Uh, here is uh, an example of a Bayesian network that uh, is capable of modeling discrete and continuous variables. There is nothing in the theory that prevents us from making Bayesian networks continuous. So in a way, very close to systems of equations. These variables contain equations, others contain maybe distributions, and you can mix that, intertwine with, uh, with uh, discrete nodes, discrete and continuous nodes. This is a uh, capturing a physical process in heating and cooling of buildings, equation that describes the, um, the interaction between uh, the uh, cold water outlet temperature and other temperatures. Directed graphs are great because um, of the interface, the, the insight that you get into the problem by just looking at them. You can reconfigure them and they have sound theoretical foundations. So it's not some kind of hocus pocus, but this is just gravity theory, decision theory, um, in engineering modeling. Uh, I told you that Bayesian networks are closely related to systems of equations. So you may ask yourself, what about systems of differential equations? Well, it turns out that there is an extension of Bayesian networks uh, to um, systems of difference equations. Difference equations are essentially um, equations with uh, discrete time. That's the, the only difference. But you can model with them uh, dynamic systems. And uh, you can observe how probabilities, how distributions change over time, or how the means change over time. In any case, you can look at the development of systems like this um, uh, over time under uncertainty. You can extend Bayesian networks that you just saw to support decisions into a formalism that is known as influence diagrams. To extend that, you just need two, uh, uh, two new type of nodes. Instead of just nodes that are variables, you need decisions. Decision nodes are very similar to regular variables. The only thing is that they don't have probability distributions described over them because they are assumed to be completely under the control of the decision maker. You decide what that value is going to be. Your decision in combination with the, the effect of the decision on the world, possibly, determines the, the uh, value function over the outcomes. So utilities describe the preferences, the values over 
future states of the world that will occur after your decisions have been made. And that allows us to calculate the optimal decisions, to optimize them. And that's precisely decision theory, calculating the expected utilities and telling which decision is the best. You can have series of decisions, etc. Finally, the thing that I'm going to, to spend some time uh, on uh, in the second hour is learning data mining. We can learn, of course, from, uh, parameters from a data set given a structure, but we can also retrieve a structure we can, from the data. We can learn the structure from the data. When I first saw it 20 something years ago, I found it magic. But that is indeed possible, as I will, will show you. Genie, uh, the program uh, that I'm going to uh, show you, is uh, essentially consisting of uh, a library of classes. Those of you who do programming can, can use it uh, from uh, C or C language. If you have, uh, if you use other languages, there are wrappers that allow you to use it from .NET, uh, from Java, from R, from Python, from uh, .com environments, and even on uh, iPhone, iPads. Uh, Genie is what you will see, is uh, a model developer module that uh, allows you to interactively build models, play with them, analyze them. There's a learning module that cuts uh, through to the library, of course, um, and there, is, there are interface elements. There's also direct support for diagnosis, and there's also a qualitative interface based on SMILE. 